This is Darkest Timeline. It's an app in Ornament and Crime's Hemisphere Suite. On the surface it appears to be just another sequencer, but if you explore deeper you'll find it's actually great for generative music and for alternating melodies. In this video I'm going to show you how Darkest Timeline works, explain how to use it in your patches, and give you some ideas for ways you can use it to both send and receive MIDI and CV from other apps. Let's get started. On its surface, Darkest Timeline appears like a 32-step sequencer. You can see here on the top line, there's 32 steps in the sequence. The top line is the pitch information, and the bottom line is the probability. It allows you to split these 32 steps into two sequencers, each running in parallel, but all drawing notes from the same 32 notes that you have in here. So I use the left knob to adjust the length of the sequencer. Now that I've set it to 16 steps, it means we have two 16-step sequencers running in parallel. One will play the steps 1 through 16, and the other one will play steps 17 through 32. Steps 1 through 16 will be sent out of output A and C for the pitch and sugar information, and steps 17 to 32 will be sent out of outputs B and D for their pitch and trigger. So if you have a probability of 0%, you'll have no steps played, and a probability of 50% means there's a 1 in 2 chance that that trigger will fire and that note will be played. You can have two 8-step sequencers running in parallel. You can have two 2-step two sequencers or even then to a one-step sequence. I find this is a great way of changing the relationship between the rhythm and the melody being played. So you can change up the melody very quickly and also keep the rhythm to a fixed beat. Like most sequencers, you also have the option to set the start point, but you can use the rightmost knob here to set the index, it's called, which is where the sequence will start playing. So as you see here, I'm turning the right knob and I'm setting the start point for the sequence. One fun feature of Darkest Timeline for more generative music is a long press on the left button will randomize the timelines for both the probability on the bottom here and the pitch on the top. So you see here I long press the left button and now all of my notes have changed. Another long press here, watch on the screen, they've changed again. And if you have a sequence that you like, you can save it by long pressing the right button to go back to the main menu and then long pressing the right button again. Now it will only save one sequence, so it will reboot into whatever you saved from the last time you were using it. But there's even more it can do. It can record CV information for both the pitch and probability, and then play that back as it loops, so you can use it as a CV recorder. You can record and send MIDI using the USB port here on the back of the uh, Ornament and Crime Teensy processor. So it's a quick way of doing CV to MIDI conversion. And finally, like most of the Ornament and Crime apps, you can short press on the left out button here, and you can quantize these notes to different scales. So I have it in the Dorian scale to a different key here. Let's see, key of C, I use the left knob to adjust this. Okay, that's enough theory. Let's actually sit down and build a patch. I'm going to feed a clock from output 8 of palms here into trigger input 1, digital 1. As soon as I hit play, you'll see that the sequencer starts playing. I'll just take the pitch output from output A here into the Volper Octave input on oscillator 1 here on twin waves. And because I've got twin waves enabled in VCA mode, it's got a VCA built in, I'm going to patch the trigger, which is on output C. And to keep life simple, I'm just going to patch straight from twin waves output here to the output of my audio interface. Now I do have a Zoya pedal here which I'm using for a little bit of reverb and delay but I'm not going to turn it on so let's listen to this dry. Remember I said that the probability timeline determined whether or not a note played. If you look closely here, you'll see some of the bars are taller than others. So a taller bar means it's more likely that step will trigger and more likely that note will play. But of course some of the bars, such as these here and these last two here, are pretty much down at zero. So the probability that a note is going to play on that step is about zero. I'm going to shorten this down now to four steps, as you see here. And Because relatively speaking, three out of four of the notes here are actually at a higher probability than zero. I can of course long press the left button, and now I've randomized again. 
Now that I've randomized it, we get a totally different melody against a totally different rhythm. This can be kind of fun if you want to mix things up. If you've got something dialed in and it's getting a bit boring, either adjust the length or long press the left button and you've randomized. Remember though, when you randomize something, you've lost what's there previously unless you've saved it. I've loaded up a sequence I prepared earlier. And the first thing you'll notice is that all of the probabilities are 100%. So now we know all of the notes will play. Let's go ahead and shorten that down to eight steps. I'm going to put my headphones on so we can hear it. Now that we've just listened to one melody, let's switch between the melodies from the first eight steps and then the next eight steps. In other words, from the main timeline and the alternate timeline or alternate universe, as it's called in the manual. So the best way to do this is to use a switcher. And for that, I'm going to use the clavis mix switch and take two inputs, which I can switch between under CV control. So let's patch this up. So now I've patched up a simple selector that if I choose between these two steps, you see the inputs here are alternated. So I can choose the main melody or the alternate melody. We start by playing the main melody. Now we're on the main one. Alternate, back to the main one. So this shows how straight away we can generate two different melodies out of one sequencer by just taking different slices of the 32 steps that are available. And this could be very useful if, say, we wanted to program in a chorus and a verse. I keep talking about recording CV into the darkest timeline sequencer, but how do we do it? And in the first example, I'm just going to set this to 32 steps, and we're going to record in CV values as they change over time. If you press the up button, you'll see a little CV icon appears here in the top right-hand corner of the screen. And that indicates that the ornament and crime is now in CV recording mode. And if you send CV values in on CV1 here, it will record those values as they move over time across 32 steps. Of course, you still need to send a clock in here on digital input one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to patch in the output here of my mix switch. Now, when I press the play button, we're in record mode. And as I turn this knob here, CV values will be recorded. You'll also hear the pitch of the oscillator change and watch closely the bars here on the pitch timeline, and you'll see them go up and down as I move the knob. Let's try it out. And it starts from the index line, which is the first step. So you see as I Once I'm happy with what I recorded, I stop the clock going into gate input one, and then press the left button again to disable record mode. And now this CV pattern is stored in the sequencer. So you can hear now with a little bit of reverb and delay, you can hear we recorded in a very different sequence. What if we wanted to record in different probabilities to go with those notes? How would we do that? Very, very simple. We can use the same principle, but put the input into CV input two. So I'm gonna pop that in there. I'll dial this back to 32 steps. Now the notes won't change, but what will change this time around is the probability each note will play. So what I'll do is press the right down button now, and you'll notice it says CV again, um, but it's now in the probability recording, and you know it's in probability recording because the bar is flashing on the bottom timeline. So CV2 for probability, CV1 for pitch. Don't get them confused, otherwise you won't record anything. Again, we start the clock, and as I turn this knob here, you'll see the probability line change, and of course the notes are changing as I play. Back down to eight steps, it's a little clearer. You can see as I was turning this knob, the darkest timeline app was recording the probability changes. And now you can hear we have a very different melody. And so you can create some very nice progressions here if you record in a CV from say an LFO or from a uh, other sequencer somewhere, record them in here and then play them back. And then you can adjust and slice the lengths of the sequence as it plays.
Surely there are better ways of recording pitch information into the sequencer than sending a clock in and twiddling a knob and hoping you get what you want. Say you had a particular melody in mind that you wanted to program in. Why not use a keyboard like the Arturia Keystep? I've hooked up the pitch and gate outputs of the Keystep to the CV1 and Digital 1 inputs on the Ornament in Crime. Now I'm going to also load up a sequence where I've set the probabilities all to 100%. But this really helps because if the probabilities are not 100% as you're playing keys on the sequencer, it will not actually sound out the notes and you'll think you've missed something. Now I've got a 16 step sequence here, so let's turn on CV record and play on the keyboard. Now that we've recorded that in, we can actually listen to it. I can even just hit play here on the key step to send in. Now, say while we had our key step here, we also wanted to record some probability information into the sequencer. I'll use the modulation strip on the key step to send the CV information for probability into the uh, darkest timeline. So as I move my finger up and down the mod strip here, we'll go from zero to 100% probability for notes. Let's play around with that. Now watch the probability time bars as I hit play here on the sequencer. You see as I slide my finger up and down the mod strip, I'm sending voltages from zero to five volts into darkest timeline. So I can do this. So we go back to listening to what we had recorded. Let's bring into play the fact that we have the alternate sequencer using the same trick I showed you earlier with the mix switch to choose between the outputs. Again, I've got the mix switch set into CV index mode so I can choose between which of the two in inputs are playing. And now when I hit play, I'm choosing between the alternate timeline and the main timeline. Now before we go any further, let's have a little techno break. It's possible to send and receive MIDI over USB into the Ornament in Crime, and the Darkest Timeline app can take advantage of that. If you just take the uh, ornament and crime out, you'll see on the back the teensy board, like I showed in the previous video. And here is the USB port, and the USB port allows you to connect it to a computer or indeed another synth. You just need a USB mini cable, like this one here. I just carefully insert it into the, uh, the port, because these micro USB connectors can be quite fragile. And now the tricky bit, how to get this back into my case. If you connect this into your computer, the ornament in crime will appear like a USB MIDI device. Let's actually send some notes using the timeline that we have here. And I'm going to play those notes in Synthesia over here on my computer. So we're going to hear audio coming through on the modular system as well as audio from the computer, because the same notes that are being played over here on Twin Waves are being sent as MIDI notes into Synthesia. <music> So you could capture that into any uh, DAW or any other program you had that you wanted to play music on. You can record MIDI from your computer into Darkest Timeline. I'm not going to go through that today because I think we've covered enough in today's tutorial. Some tips and tricks to speed things up if you get stuck. Uh, you can always just you know erase the sequence by uh, recording in blank notes by going back into the um, CV recording mode and just sending in zero volts. If you send in a gate here on input number four, all the notes will default to 100% probability. So there's a quick way to actually hear the notes and not get tripped up by probability not playing certain notes. If you wanted to transpose your sequence, you could also do that using the CV3 input. 
If you want to change the length of the gate being generated by um, Darkest Timeline, this setting here, the Trig Gate setting, allows you to change the percentage of the time occupied by each tick that the gate will be open, in other words, that the note will sound. If you would prefer to just send a trigger, because perhaps you have an envelope generator somewhere, you just want to trigger it really quickly, just go back to 0%, one more turn to the left, takes you to trig mode. And that'll just send a very short pulse out of the output, uh, too short to hear, but enough to trigger uh, any DSR envelope, for example. So that's it in terms of Darkest Timeline, an unusual app and one that you might not necessarily think of using when you first sit down with Hemispheres. As always, leave me some comments down below and let me know what you think and if you have any requests for future videos. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date for more videos from me. Thanks for watching.